So you came to NAC in 1999, and from everything that I hear, it needed revitalizing and refocusing. So because part of the, as we talked before, part of the audience for these interviews is in fact students, yep. management students, arts management students, all the kind of, the young Albert Schultzes of the world. So when you come to a large organization that you and of the board that you choose, needs to revitalize, how do you actually begin that? Well, I have to describe what I walked into uh, when, uh, uh, when I first came. And it, it's a, there's, there's, there's a wonderful story that on the day that I was introduced to the press here in 1999, I arrived at the front door of the National Arts Center and, uh, uh, and a very nice young woman who worked in communications took me from the foyer to what would become my office and walked me down the hall down here. And she said, you know that we call this death row. And I started to laugh and I said, what do you mean death row? And she said, well, you know, we've gone through five or six CEOs in the last, uh, in the last uh, decade and you know, they've all come down this hall. So it, the gallows humor here is that it's death row. So uh, an hour later at the press conference, I decided to open the press conference with that story uh, that, uh, that talking about the young woman who had described this as death row and, and that and while I thought that as gallows humor it was pretty funny, uh, part of my role here was to, uh, to make sure that over the next decade or two it stopped being called death row, that, that people were preoccupied with completely different things. And, and you know, that, uh, that fall in, uh, in 1999, this was an organization that had completely lost its way. Uh, it had stopped focusing on, uh, on quality to the degree that it had to. It had stopped focusing on being a national organization. It, uh, it, it was no longer an organization that was much of a risk taker. Uh, and, uh, and my job was to, uh, uh, to, uh, to coax and cajole uh, uh, this organization back into being a vibrant uh, organization that was, focused on, that was focused on excellence, that was focused on being national, that was focused on education, that began to generate uh, new, uh, new areas of revenue. But most of all, an organization that felt good about itself again, that, that it had a sense of, that it had both a rich past and an unlimited future. And that was, I, that was my job, to persuade this organization that, uh, that it did have a kind of an unlimited future, that everything was possible creatively. And uh, So the three active verbs you just used there were coax, cajole, and persuade. So you, as the CEO, those are your main tools. Th those are those are the main tools. The uh, the, the you know the, the I this is in, in a job like this, you're not like an admiral where you're telling people what to do all the time. Uh, you're mostly nudging and cajoling and persuading and doing those kinds of things. Part of it has to do with your own personality. Uh, I am by nature uh, uh, somebody who is. Uh, who is, who is an optimist, I'm an enthusiast, uh, and so hopefully I bring that level of optimism and enthusiasm to the job and to the place, uh, and, and part of it is to, to recruit fabulous people uh, so that they become champions for a kind of new wave of creativity. Uh, part of it is to find resources for them so that, so that they can do the things they feel they have to do protect them, give them the freedom to do it, uh, get them excited, get some wins under their belt, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and a lot of that happened. And uh, we have now, 15 years later, uh, become uh, uh, close to being the kind of national organization that I hope we will be in the future. Uh, we, we have generated a great deal of new revenue uh, mostly from private sources that have allowed uh, 
uh, our incredible team of artistic leaders to, uh, to do very good work. We, uh, we do a great deal of touring. We do national festivals. We do education in northern Canada. Uh, we, we do wonderful tours of, of, of the Arctic and the UK and China. Uh, you know, we do a lot of things now that that people feel good about. And, uh, and, and on the process of changing the GPS system or changing the compass on it, does it start with the board? Is is the board strategic to that, or is it the managers, the people? It's both. Uh, I was fortunate in that uh, the guy who recruited me was a guy called David Layton, who is a who is a. Uh, who has been a terrific arts administrator in the past and, and, uh, and, and uh, a, just a very good board leader, uh, a lovely man with the right values, passionate about uh, what this place was doing. We worked as a, as a team, which is really important. We, be, we, we became friends. That's not essential, but we became good friends. Uh, and. Uh, and in the first month or so I was here, the board was central because I laid out uh, very explicitly a vision of where this organization had to go over the next 10 years. I mean, it was very quick. Uh, they, they listened to it. They accepted it. Uh, we put together a strategic plan, which, we're still, uh, which is still the basis of what we're doing. And, uh, and the board after having been quite difficult with CEOs and the senior management over a period of time, uh, was in fact quite supportive. And uh, so the board is important. Uh, How did you manage to have a supportive relationship with the board? Well, as I said, it started with David. Uh, right. you, the, so the, was that lucky or is that, I mean, there must well, be a it, Peter skill here somewhere. Uh, well, how to make sure boards actually. Part of it, part of it is that, that my advice to, to arts administrators is to to be very careful who you who you select as your chair, and 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 you do that by when you're being recruited for a job, uh, uh -huh. make very sure that uh, that that the chair that's recruiting you is in fact the kind of chair with whom you can have a kind of a, a kind of partnership, and uh, and that there are people in the wings that uh, that can continue that. It's the it's the single most important relationship. Uh, that I had in the days when the organization was in trouble. Uh, because if, in <coughs> fact, uh, that relationship, the board chair is one where you see the world in similar ways, if, you're, if you're, your sense of direction for the organization is, in fact, uh, in sync, it makes an enormous difference. The organization takes its cues from these two people. Uh, so I looked at David. I, uh, my instincts, uh, in my Intuitively, I, I concluded that this was a guy who was right for this role, that somebody I could work with very easily. Uh, and so that was very, very important, which then allowed me to get to the really most important set of relationships, which were with the, the creative leaders in this organization. So.